Hello and welcome guys to another session. Uh, today in this video we'll be talking about build root and how Kimu can be used to try out various uh, package options uh, and there'll be several topics inside this so it's kind of a mix of various different things I want to show. Um, before we dive in I would like you guys to uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not and uh, that really helps me out so with that let's get started so the first thing is um, just very simple review of commands that you might be able to use uh, some of the commands are uh, like if you want to see the list of all the configurations that are possible in Kimu, just say make list def configs um, and just let's quickly try it out um, so i've created a, a temp folder here in which I can try out uh, various things. So before we do that, let's just get rid of all this sound here so you don't get annoyed by that. Um, so here, if we say make, actually it may already be there, de list def configs. Um, so that should show us uh, a whole bunch of configuration options that are available in the system. And here you can see a variety of boards um, and architectures are supported here already. There's a smorgasbord of um, things that are in there. You just have to pick what you want to build against. And if you want to grab for uh, chemo, then you can see that it'll probably show up about still a whole bunch of options for chemo. Now I'm going to build a specific chemo option, but uh, you can see that there's various options, right? Various architectures. Even for Kimu, the emulation supports a lot of things like FPGA boards like NEOS2 or you know, RISC-based architectures and so on and so forth. There's a whole lot of things. So take a look at those. Uh, next command is because I'm going to be building for Kimu x86-64, um, you can see that that is supported here. So before you do anything, before you start customizing, you have to run that command. So uh, let me see if I, have, I haven't done that. So I'm just going to run that command, just copy that. And if you just make that, um, so that uh, has now written in our current folder a dot config file, which will be the starting point. And it tells um, build root that we should be building towards this kind of um, x86 architecture for uh, a chemo emulator. So that being said, and now the third command is make menu config, which is where we customize. So it just goes like this. You just say make menu config, and then you start changing these options. Um, and you can go inside these. You also have a way to search these. If you, uh, if you look here at the top, it shows you a way to search. Um, so if you do forward slash, that is for search. For example, if I want to look for drop bear, um, which is a SSH program. Here it tells you that the drop bear is located under target packages, networking applications, and it's called drop bear. And if you want to look directly inside the package, package folder uh, inside uh, where the installation is, you'll see package drop bear config.in. So, um, and also shows you how to turn them on uh, command line as well, right? So um, that being said, those are the simple things I wanted to show. Now I'm going to go back up to the actual folder where we are doing all the builds. So let's just jump into that one. Now we are in the real folder. This is where I've already done a bunch of work. And so I'm going to be able to show you how to move forward. So with that, I guess let's dive into something, what I call hello package. And hello package is just a way if I wanted to compile some of my C code and inject it into build root, how do I do that? So if I go into package folder, Inside the package folder, you will see there is a config.in, and this config.in is kind of the global config.in that shows you how any package can be added into build root. And here we added miscellaneous section in which we have added our own package hello config in. So now let's go inside this packet in hello, and um, and inside hello, which we created, there is again config.in, and here we just say here's the package name. And there's a boolean hello, which then just shows some simple way to add this package. You can copy this. And then hello.mk is the file that shows how to upload this file, how to compile and upload, or what the what are the compiled things that we use. 
and it shows that you have to run make and once make is done there'll be a file called hello created inside that and how to install that and then the generic way to um, you know, upload all that inside the, the build binaries. So that is how we do that and then if you go inside the source folder source folder just has the hello.c and a make file very simple and uh, if basically if you look at the make file it's a very simple hello world program compilers GCC and the usual stuff you compile this and make a make a hello program and the hello program just gets uploaded inside the package so that's all there is now if you then go outside this uh, and go outside this to the main level in the build root level we have already run um, Kimo x86 def configs as I've shown you earlier and so when I run make menu config it should pick up um, the dot config file um, that is already in this folder and that's let's just see I'll take oops it's probably done autocomplete so I should just take a moment to okay so here um, what I want to show is that inside packages um, let's see where we have uh, I think it's uh, let me just search for hello let's see maybe it'll show me so it's I it's inside uh, target packages miscellaneous there you go so we go inside target packages and go inside miscellaneous and hello is already checked because I've already turned it on right so that is essentially how we added hello and I'm going to show you other options here next thing is kernel changes so for kernel changes you can just go into kernel kernel version custom and I've changed this to 695 and but if you do that some headers go out of um, order so the next thing to check is that in the tool chain section custom header so I'm going to show you that so if I come here I've already said I want a custom version of kernel once you do that you come back here you specify the exact version which I have done here and then and then you have to also change like I said in the tool chain custom kernel so let's go to tool chain in here I had to tweak something as well um, let's see if I can show you let's find that um, okay let's see if I can find where the okay there we go custom kernel header series 66x or later so here if it's selecting 61x or something is going to complain so you have to select that option 66x or later and that should be good to go so that's how you change the kernel inside this and then I want to add some users so if I want to add users then I have to go system config okay so I'm gonna to go to system config and then I'm going to add a users file here so if you see path to users tables so if path to users tables I'll create this users.txt file and in this there's a specific format of adding users right so um, I am going to show that uh, a little bit later but this is where you add the users tables just specify create a file and give it the path here right and then you can add users whichever users you want to create and that's it so I am going to um, escape out of this because all my option, options are already there um, and so I'm going to show you users.txt so uh, I'm going to create user responde and then um, I think uh, let's see users.txt I and then um, you can follow along I'm not really sure uh, what this minus one are um, but uh, these are basically giving it probably a UID so when you say minus one in these places it just picks the the um, OS picks the uh, next UI user ID and group and a group ID again I've used minus one now this is the password passwords can be stored multiple ways this is a clear text password which I don't recommend um, this is the simplest option I'm just taking a dummy password here uh, but there are ways to store the crypt password and you can just look it up and you can store the crypt password here 
then the home folder and the shell and then target message uh, let's say welcome to uh, your OS okay so that's it that's what you do and then make menu config uh, is done and then you just run make and I've already run this once so this shouldn't take very long to complete so let us see how long it takes it should go pretty fast now once this is done you can go inside output and images and here you will find a script called start chemo and we'll look at start chemo not shell and you can see that this can start it but there is a little problem here so it lets you open the chemo but it doesn't map the SSH I can also show you how to SSH into the thing so um, I'm going to show you how it SSH is so I have a backup script here because every time you do this your script gets overwritten if you correct it it's gone so here's where I added uh, host forwarding of TCP port 2222 uh, to port 22 inside which is the SSH port um, so I have done this right here right so I have this is what you can do in your script um, to get this so what I'm going to do is basically rm start chemo.sh and then I'm going to copy start chemo.sh as start chemo.sh okay so now I'm going to start this and it's going to start chemo uh, x86 64 environment for me and there we go so root is the default and I have got inside root but um, but also I'm going to show you um, that uh, what is my OS version so you name dash R and you can see that instead of 61 I have gotten 695 which is what the kernel I had intended to get right and also if you run hello you can see that our hello package is also installed so the kernel and hello package are there that's fantastic let's just see if we have our users available and so if I log in as myself and there we go so it also allowed me to come in as the user that I had provided and the password that I had provided so that's great final thing is that if I um, want to get inside this and uh, let's say I'll create another one and I want to SSH into this so if I want to SSH then I have to say SSH uh, a at localhost and um, that is port is 2222 and hopefully so it, it's because the kernel has been regenerated I'm going to delete my uh, known host file so dot um, ssh known host and then I'm going to ssh again and I'm going to accept this and and there you go so I have SSH inside um, inside this um, chemo and now I can do whatever I want to do um, say hello so that shows you that I'm actually logged into my OS on the other side so um, I think that that's mostly uh, what I wanted to show today that uh, as a summary uh, we wanted to um, go through this hello package uh, show you how it's integrated a very simple example of a hello C, C file and how it was run then we try to take, make some kernel changes kernel improvements we could do that with just to make uh, menu config and we were able to add a users or text file and then finally uh, we were able to SSH now SSH it does require drop bear or text sorry drop bear program so I'm just going to show I think I've shown this in an earlier session but I'm just going to walk back and make sure you are clear because uh, if you don't have drop bear running it will not work so search for drop bear and you see that's in target package networking and so just go to target packages and networking applications and if you just go down to D 
you can see that drop bear is enabled. So make sure this is enabled or you would not get your SSH session in, right? And uh, you can easily see that drop bear is available and running. Once you log in, make sure that is there uh, by doing ps-ef and making sure drop bear is there. And if you've done that, you should be able to SSH into it from outside, which is fantastic. You'll be able to do all the uh, test work that you are planning to do with your build route. So with that, I guess we have um, come to our um, end of this video. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in another video. Until then, take care. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.